Okay, hello everyone. Um, so my name is Jan. Um, I'm working for Continental Automotive. Well, I've been presenting at the ERCE and Open Source Summit quite a few times before. Um, so, but actually this is the first time where I'm not really speaking about a technical topic, um, even though it is a topic that really pretty much affects, interestingly, uh, many, many technical persons. Um, so this year I'm going to speak about burnout. Um, so just to make one thing clear, um, I am, it's not my intention to give a like uh, medical or scientific correct description about this topic. So I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, neither a psychologist nor a therapist. Um, I'm an engineer and this is basically um, yeah, the point of view from which I would like to, to look into this topic. So it's it's really pretty much, as you will see from my own experience, I would like to dive into, in, into this topic and, well, at the end of the day, raise a bit of awareness of this thing, which is actually becoming, unfortunately, a increasing problem. So before we go on, um, let's have a brief look at the agenda. So um, actually, I would like to start to give you a bit more background why I decided to um, present about this topic. Um, I um, Well, we will look into what, what is burnout, um, how, how does it look like and how it, can we spot it. We'll have a closer look about the symptoms and how they evolve over time. Um, we'll talk a bit about how we can deal with burnout and, and for all these steps, we'll just not look into from, from one perspective. We'll try to cover this from different perspectives, like from the perspective of a um, affected person, from a coworker or from a team lead. So how can we deal with the things and how can we help out? And uh, well, most importantly, we'll also have a look at, um, I mean, what can we do to avoid burnout situations? Okay, so, but, um, well, first of all, why did I decide to talk about this topic? Um, actually, I thought about this quite some time, um, but I never really got the motivation to, to make a presentation about this. And then at this year's FOSTEMS, FOSTEM early this year, um, I saw a presentation by Andrew Hutchings, um, which was called Recognizing Burnout. That was a very, very good presentation. So thank you so much, Andrew, for giving this presentation. And that finally got me the motivation um, to, to go ahead with this talk. Um, so at the end of the day, um, as you can imagine, um, my motivation is coming from personal experience. Um, so I felt burnout some years ago and I, I had to take some time off actually. At the end of the day, I've been quite lucky, um, even though it was, I have to admit, a very unpleasant experience. And well, during that time, I've been a team leader responsible for a team of engineers. And well, after my personal experience, I, I decided that I will do the best I could probably, I probably can to avoid that one of my team members is going to, to a similar situation. And what happened is actually then one of my team members suffered a burnout. And to be honest, this is still something that bothers me and makes me thinking because I, well, um, you all think what, what could I have done better? Um, is there something I could have done? Um, and, and I think this, this is for me still more bothersome than my own experience that I was not able to avoid this unpleasant experience for, for my team. Um, so this gave me the motivation to look into this topic. Um, I did a lot of reading. I, I talked to many people, to many affected persons um, to just discuss the experience. And what I realized at the end of the day, there are actually many, many affected persons. So that was, was really surprising that many people, even of my, many of my friends actually knew about this topic. Um, have been affected by this topic or at least know someone who was affected. So um, I, I easily realized that this is definitely becoming an increasing problem. 
But at the same time, I could also see that there is still a big lack of awareness um, in communities, also in companies. Um, people do not really know how to deal uh, with burnout and, and do not really have a feeling what, what, what burnout really is. And this is the intention of this presentation to give a bit more background and to, to raise the awareness about this topic. Okay, so first of all, um, we're going to start with a question, what is burnout? It sounds like an easy question, um, but to be honest, it is actually not easy to answer because burnout is a very complex topic with many, many different aspects. So it is very individual, um, looks different from person to person. If I should um, summarize the topic, I would say it is a state of mental and physical exhaustion which is at the end of the day, usually leading to a collapse. The root cause of this state of exhaustion is long-term unresolved stress. And when you do a bit of reading, you will often read the definition of long-term work-related stress. And I highly disagree with this um, definition. So I would say it is not necessarily work-related stress. At the end of the day, um, the um, cause is stress. Um, but even still, the World Health Organization grades it as a phenomenon caused by work-related stress. Once again, I'm not a medical doctor, but I highly disagree with this. So I would say it is caused by unresolved stress. Um, but since it is not work-related, um, I would say the risk is not related to any age or to your job or to your work experience. Um, it can basically hit each and anyone. And well, how does it look like um, pathologically? Um, the symptoms are at the end of the day, in my opinion, not distinguishable from a depression. Um, what might be different is the context. So it is the root cause is stress related, uh, but the symptoms are very, very similar. So now that we say it is similar to a depression, so we might get an understanding that we're talking about a very serious disease. Um, well, still there is raising awareness, but we're still on a way to understand this problem. And, and just to, to prove that there was lack of attention for quite some time, even the World Health Organization um, did not grade burnout as an official disease before 2019. So um, just last year, um, burnout has been added to ICD-11, which is the 11th edition of the International Classification of Diseases. Um, just So that means that just one year ago, um, World Health Organization put burnout on their official catalog of diseases. So, okay, now that we talked a bit about what is burnout, I would like to start with a couple of risk factors. So, because that, that was the thing, what I started with when I tried to understand this problem. And when I realized that there are so many people affected, I tried to understand what is the root cause? Why are so many people suffering burnouts these days? Um, so I tried to figure out what are the risk factors that are causing stress and frustration and basically stress and frustration is the root cause uh, for burnout situations. Um, so let's have an overall look of which risks we have nowadays. Um, so a big issue I see is that nowadays we are always on. We are constantly available for each and anyone. You know, we have smartphones, we have computers. We can be reached by social media, by email, by phone, everywhere at any time. And I mean, this was not the case 20 years ago. And um, nowadays it's really that you have actively to take some time off. So you have to actively decide that you don't want to be reachable or that you do not want to communicate. So uh, this is definitely a, a big risk that we are always reachable and have to actively take a step back. Um, at the same time, we have a big information overload. Um, we, we have so many options to get information. We have to deal with so many different sources of information. We have to grade that information. And together with this constant availability, I mean, we, we 
our mind has to deal with that. Um, this is very stressful for us and we need to, well, we, we have to learn to take our time off. Um, another issue I see, and that's actually also very interesting is bad communication. Um, what I find interesting here is that I mean, we have so many new ways to communicate. So we are always reachable, we are always on, um, but we just use the, well, the, the, all these options for communication just the wrong way. Instead of just efficiently exchanging the information that is needed, uh, we always put the pressure for that, on us that we need to communicate, that we want to be reachable um, and, and that we exchange information if, even if it's not unneeded. So it's a bit that, we, we have so many options to communicate, but we, we, we just um, use it the wrong way. So I think this is a big and, and growing problem in our society and definitely one of the root causes why um, yeah, so many people are suffering stress-related diseases. Um, so for sure, there's many other um, personal risk factors. Um, and it, it's not it's not just one factor. So usually it's a combination of things, right? So from a personal perspective, um, what is always a risk is a high workload. So it's not just a high workload, but high workload can always be a risk for sure. Stress and once again, not only work related. Um, extremely high ambition. Um, can be a risk because if you have high ambition, and this is the case for most of the technical people. Um, it's, it's hard for you to take a step back and it's hard to accept that you need a break. Um, and this definitely can be a risk. Um, another risk is that you do not really take your time off and um, it's not about the amount of time. So when I prepared that slide, um, I discussed a bit with a friend and originally I wrote here not taking enough time off. And during the discussion, we came to the conclusion that no, it's not about the amount of time, it's about the quality of time. So you need to take your time off. That would mean you don't read your emails, you, you, you switch off your phone. So you just take the time for the things um, you love and you're interested in. So it's about the quality of the time you have. Um, because if you don't do that, um, you start mixing up shop in spare time and um, this is definitely something very problematic and is also a well-known cause um, for stress. So for sure there are also risk factors that can be given by a company, by a team or by working together in a community. And also the first point here was um, given by a friend of mine and I think it, it is a very good point. Um, this is a classic specifically in companies that you um, have unclear role definitions or the tasks that are put uh, on a person are not fitting the specific role. Um, because that, that might cause that people feel overwhelmed with the tasks they have to do. Um, they might get frustrated because they don't have an idea what is really their role or what, what is expected from them. And um, this is definitely a risk because this can come without any attention. So, I mean, if you just start up with a new team, um, you, you don't do the proper role definitions. Um, so you, I mean, you just forgot something. There was nothing you actively did wrong. Uh, it's just something you forgot, but that could cause um, stress and frustration because people just could not deal with the tasks they get on, the, on their desk. Um, another point is missing appreciation. Um, this is also very important and a common things, uh, thing in companies. Um, I mean, you, you need to receive some appreciation for the work you do. And I mean, it's, it's not just about the appreciation being there. It's about, I mean, the appreciation has to be actively communicated. And I mean, if you don't receive appreciation for the work being done, you get frustrated and you get stressed out. Um, I mean, both topics that I mentioned here before are also closely related to leadership in a community or in a team. So if you have bad leadership or lack of leadership in a team, this will um, definitely influence the way of working and this definitely can frustrate people. And also closely related to this topic, it's communication. Um, if a team communicates bad or does not communicate at all, um, this, this is a serious issue. And it's, it's really a topic where we should have a closer look. Then 
because one of the main learnings I had in my professional career is that having a good culture of open and transparent communication is really important. So if you fail with that, you will completely fail. And that communication topic is a big and underestimated risk factor in a team. So that can lead to a lot of frustration and to a lot of stress. And what is important to understand here is that bad communication is definitely an issue. But the biggest problem is the communication that is not happening at all. So that might sound a bit weird, but um, there is a very nice example here. So there's a short story given by Paul Watzlawick. Um, he was a Austrian communication scientist. And he gave as an example, um, a short story, which is like, uh, there's this guy who wants to hang a picture. So, but he just has the picture and he has a nail. So he's just, he just needs a hammer, but he doesn't own a hammer, so he cannot hang the picture. So what comes to his mind is he could ask his neighbor for a hammer, but then he thinks, okay, but can I ask him? Because yesterday my neighbor did not really say hello to me and he looked pretty, pretty strange. And now that, that I think about it, he never really said hello to me. Um, so, What's the problem with this guy? I mean, if he doesn't really say hello to me, he's got a problem with me. And obviously he won't borrow me his hammer, right? So, I mean, but that's that's not nice from him. So, I mean, I would give him everything he needs. So, and, and the story continues and he's doing circus in his head. And at the end of the day, what he basically does is he goes to the neighbor's house, he knocks the door, the neighbor opens the door and he just yells at him, well, just keep your hammer, you bastard. Um, this is, I, I pretty much like this example because we can see that there's a serious conflict obviously coming out of nothing um, because there was no communication happening at all. Uh, the whole story was going on in the head of one person and if he would have spoken, um, which means that he would just have asked for the hammer, there won't be any issue at all. So, um, and I'll, I'll come back to this point over and over again communication is important and it is a key aspect. Okay, so now that we spoke about what is burnout and what are risk factors, I would like to speak about typical symptoms that people show um, who are getting stressed out. Um, so once again, this is very individual. This can look very different from person to person. Um, but these, these are the most common ones. And usually it's, it's a combination of, of symptoms that usually evolve over time. So we'll come back to that. But so the classic ones are um, problems to concentrate. That's usually the starting point. So people easily get distracted. Um, therefore their work is getting less effective. Um, you have a, and I, I can confirm that from my own experience, you have a continuous feeling of tiredness. And you remember the title um, of the presentation is when your mind is tired. And this definitely you have, this is definitely the case. You have a continuous feeling of tiredness. Um, this usually goes along with uh, physical problems. So like continuous headaches or um, getting sick on a frequent basis. Um, So um, um, also a very common thing is um, that you have sleeping problems. And um, so the, the thing is you, you cannot really get into sleep. Um, therefore you, you, you have trouble getting out in the morning. Um, so, and uh, for sure that, that really adds up with the um, continuous feeling uh, of tiredness you have. Um, so for sure, there are also some real more serious um, problems like losing interest in activities like sports and hobbies. So this is basically when, when you come to that point, um, you're, you're definitely um, getting into serious trouble because um, 
this, these are typical symptoms of, of a depression. So if you lose interest in things that have been important for you before, um, this also usually goes along with um, the reduction of personal contacts. Um, also, many times other changes in behavior like the extroverted person getting introverted, uh, calm person easily gets stressed. Um, so or many other changes in, in behavior of a person. And also one very classical thing is um, escaping into other things. So people somehow realize that something is going wrong, but you, you just escape from it. Um, so the escape is usually some kind of addictive behavior. Um, that could be classical um, addictive behavior, um, but uh, like alcohol abuse or whatever, but this could also be doing something like extreme sports, um, training seven days a week, two times a day, or I don't know, doing base jumping, whatever, just um, escape from the problems that you somehow realize, but you, you just escape from it. So now um, all of these symptoms, they um, usually add up over time. They do not come from one day to another. So therefore we have to be the look at how things evolve over time. And um, a very common thing is and that many affected person can, can confirm that is that people start doing vicious circles. Um, you, you could draw these vicious circles for any of the symptoms I've, I've shown before. And, um, but the, the classic thing is how, how a burnout evolves is that basically you start getting tired. Um, at the end of the day, that makes your work less effective. But if you are a motivated person and you really want to achieve your goals, what most of the people would do is they try to compensate somehow with more working time. But that's a bad decision because I mean, if you're tired, you um, increase the working time. What happens is that tires you even more. So what you would do is you try to compensate, but that tires you even more. And you, you would just um, go on with these circles until the point where you could just cannot do it anymore. Um, and um, at the end of the day, you collapse. Um, so this involvement takes some time. It's very different from person to person, um, but there is some involvement. So now you would think, okay, this, this involvement should be spotable, right? Um, yes, it is spotable, but uh, the problem here is that as an affected person, it's hard or mostly impossible to spot the symptoms. You on your own, you just don't realize that something is going wrong. Um, other people around you, they, they have a good chance to spot it. Um, so this is why communication and personal contacts are important because then you have the chance that other at least could try to tell you something is going wrong. Um, but at the end of the day, as an affected person, I would say you just cannot spot it because you're at a point where you actually lost the ability to reflect your own behavior. So it's always good to have people around you. Um, communication, once again, is a key aspect. You can also put measures, um, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. Um, now, coming back to the involvement of symptoms. So as mentioned, this is a thing that comes over time. Um, basically, so you start at some point, you just get tired. Um, and then at some point you easily get distracted and then you get headaches, you get often sick, at some point you lose motivation and at some point it's just too much and you collapse. Um, so this involvement, I mean, this can be very different from weeks or a month to years. Um, but once again, an affected person won't realize that involvement. So unfortunately, most of the people just realize it when it's too late, when you just completely collapsed because we you just run out of energy and you cannot do it anymore. Um, you can also have a different view on this. Um, if you compare it like that, you say you charge your batteries in your spare time. Um, how it usually should look like, I mean, you should start the week with 100% charged batteries. Um, I mean, for sure, you, you lose some energy over the week, but in your spare time over the weekend, you should 
be able to recharge your batteries, you start the next week at 100%. How things usually evolve when you get burned out is that the, your time off is not enough to recharge your batteries, or you just do not take really the time off. So you do not have the chance to recharge your batteries. So you start one week at 100, the next week at 80%, um, the next week at 70%, and well, at one point you end up with a collapse because you just cannot do it anymore. Um, so now what, what happens here is, um, when this collapse comes um, for an affected person, I mentioned, I mean, you, you do not realize these symptoms on your own. So for an affected person, it feels like that this collapse comes out of a sudden. Um, this is definitely not the case because there was a long story before where you ran into serious trouble and while you got really seriously stressed out. But I mean, it just feels like it comes out of the sudden. It is, Definitely very individual once again, but usually a feeling of being mentally completely sucked out. And that usually goes along, um, usually also with a physical breakdown. You just cannot do anything. You're not able to do anything. You're not able to do the most simple decisions. So it's very individual, but it is definitely um, a serious condition. So now, <laughs> If someone is in that condition and is in serious trouble, so what can we do? And first of all, let me start with the perspective of a friend, of a coworker, or a team lead. So what can you do to help someone out? Um, so first of all, um, the only thing you can do is you can try to make an effect, affected person realize the problem. Um, that sounds way easier than it is. Because the problem is you, it's not just that you could tell, hey man, I think you, you burned out um, because the affected person just won't realize. Um, so what I can tell is you need a lot of patience here. And this is easily explainable because um, if you think about how communication happens, um, it's not just that you say something and it makes it straight into the brain of another person. Person, So, I mean, another person needs to listen and do some interpretation of the things you are saying and also to do some reflection on their own behavior. So now um, in the case of a person that is getting stressed out or burned out, um, this interpretation won't work pretty well, uh, which means that the outcome of this interpretation would not be trustable. So this is just like we would run a program in a piece of memory that is giving continuous bit flips. So we just cannot trust the result. So even if we tell a person, that person might not realize that something is going wrong. So um, the key takeaway here is that if we want to help, we need to listen and we need to be patient. And we need to understand that because I mean, that could also make us angry if we just want to help someone and we have the feeling that this person is not even listening to us. So, I mean, that person might be listening, but just won't realize what we try to tell. And um, I mean, most probably they won't even remember afterwards that you, that you really talked about this topic. So uh, you need patience. Um, please do not force anything that could make things way worse at the end of the day. Um, you need to make people realize that something is going wrong and that professional help is needed. At the end of the day, this is the only thing you could do. This is the most important thing, but I mean, there's no guarantee that you can help. And this is also a fact that we have to accept. Even with a lot of patience, it might not be possible to really help if the person does not realize. So what can we do as an affected person? Um, First of all, the most important step is to accept the situation. Um, that sounds easier, <laughs> way easier than it is. But once again, the problem is you're in a state of mind where you don't, where you cannot really reflect your own behavior. Um, and I mean, you would realize when you really collapsed, um, and as already mentioned that for you on your own, that collapse come out of a sudden. Um, so you need to think, okay, what went wrong? And you need to accept that situation. Um, it is important to understand that you're not a loser. You did not fail at all um, because you, you have this feeling of you, 
you're like a loser, but this is not the case. You're not alone. You're suffering a serious disease that others have suffered before. Um, this is something you have to accept and you need to come to a state where you can talk about the situation. And this is pretty much the basis for all the next steps you could you could probably take. Um, you need this acceptance. So for all for the whole recovery process, this is a continuous thing. You need to accept the situation. You need to talk about the situation. Which kind of help is really needed? This is very individual and it needs to be decided by a professional. That means you should talk to a doctor and see what is best for you. Um, well, in any case, taking really taking time off and taking enough time off is important. And if you return to your daily business, you should do that by step by step, not going from one hundred uh, from zero to one hundred percent. Just do it step by step. Um, this is important because what we also have to understand is that, I mean, there are many ways, good ways of recovery. So don't worry, uh, the way might be long. Um, but even after the recovery process, life will be slightly different um, because, I mean, like any serious disease, also this disease will leave some scars, which means there's a very high risk to fall back to old behavior and bad habits. There's a high risk to run into a similar situation again. Um, so you need to continuously work on your behavior. This is a fact that you have to be aware of if you've been to a burnout situation. So you continuously need to accept the situation and to work on the situation. So now, last but not least, we've been talking a lot now about burnout, what are the risk factors, how it looks like and how we can deal with it. But I think most importantly, what we also need to understand is what can we do to avoid this kind of situation? How, what can we do on our own or what can we do in the way we work together to prevent these situations? So now starting from the personal perspective, um, what can you do? So what I can recommend you from my personal experience is to implement some kind of personal alarm system, which means that um, th the thing is you cannot grade your, your, your state of health <laughs> just based on your feelings, because once again, if you're getting stressed out, you won't realize that something is going wrong. So you need to put some measures. So what I really recommend is think about what is important for you in your life. Um, what are the most important things? So for me, most important thing is to spend time with my friends and my family. And I also want to spend time for doing sports. So I'm a cyclist, I'm into cycling. So training um, means a lot to me. That is really relaxing me. So I, I really want to do that to relax. So now um, what happens if I lose energy or if I do not have, have enough time for sure, I would skip sports um, just to be able to spend still enough time with friends and family. And this is basically the step where I realized that things are getting risky. So I need to take countermeasures because what would happen in the next step if I lose even more energy, I would also skip time with friends and family and then I'm already in a very serious situation. So I would need to take countermeasures. So I really recommend to implement some kind of alarm system and most importantly, also make others aware of your alarm system. So others could spot that some things go wrong. Like for me, if I won't show up for training, for cycling for a few weeks, I mean, the guys I'm training with, they would usually realize that something is going wrong and they would uh, talk to me and ask me, why, why don't you join us for the training? So this alarm system is a pretty simple thing. I mean, for sure it's not a silver bullet, but it, it helps a lot to put some measure in your daily life. Well, there's definitely more you could do. Once again, take your time off uh, and really take your time off. Uh, I mean, that means um, turn off your phone, don't read emails, just take your time off. Do not focus all your passion on your job. Um, this is also something I could tell you from personal experience. What I always try to do is to do something at the same or even higher level of passion. Um, so the same passion I bring into my job, I want to bring it into something else in my spare time. Just to have some yeah, countermeasures in your spare time. And for sure, um, I mean, whatever you do, this cannot avoid frustration or conflicts. This is natural. In, I mean, when we work together, there will be conflicts and there will be frustration. But 
you should talk about it. I mean, once again, communication is a very important point, and we learned that communication that is not happening can be a serious problem. So, but what can we also do when working together? Like, uh, what can co-workers do? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we should have um, a culture where we value each other, where we talk to each other, where we listen to each other. Um, this is very important. And what we can also do as a co-worker, for sure we can spot changes in behavior. So if we see that someone is getting tired or getting sick on a frequent basis or just shows changes in his usual behavior, um, then um, we should talk about it. I mean, for sure, once again, we need patience. We need uh, people make realize, but we could talk to others. We could talk also to other team members. We could make the team lead aware. So there's a lot of things we could do if we spot serious changes in the behavior of a person. So, and another important point, we also should look at the like leadership perspective. So what could a team lead or a community lead do to avoid that team members um, get uh, are, are stressed out. So most importantly, um, and I've mentioned this before, um, I think it is important to establish an open and transparent culture of communication. Yes, this is a leadership issue. Um, you need to give people the feeling that, um, I mean, they can speak up, they can talk about their problems and you should be a good example. I mean, it doesn't help much if you tell people talk to each other and you do not talk to people. Um, that does not make any sense at all. So it is also specifically up to the to a team lead, to a community lead, to establish a good way of communication. Um, for sure, you need to make people feel valued. So um, we've, we talked about this also for the risk factors. If people are not feeling valued, they, they get frustrated. Um, what we have to learn is for sure, um, if you're leading a project, we usually talk about the topics that go wrong, for sure, because we need to deliver something, we get the, need to get the work done. Um, so, but we need to learn that we also explicitly state what went good. Um, this is important. I mean, we need to address both. And at the end of the day, we need to give feedback. This is, this is very important. Um, positive and negative feedback, but giving no feedback at all is the worst thing you could possibly do. Because if you do not give feedback to a team, I mean, that gives the impression that you do not really care about, about the work that is being done. Um, and this does not make people feel valued. So, and there's a reason why many companies have actually uh, mandatory trainings in giving and receiving feedback. So that might sound a bit weird, but it is very important. Um, and also you have to give people a big picture of um, yeah, why their work is needed. Um, that means make your decisions as transparent as possible. Sure, not always everything can be transparent, but make decisions as transparent as possible. Tell people why their work is needed and why their task is important because some specific task could look boring or useless. Um, but if you understand that this is a very important puzzle piece for the big picture, then, I mean, this gives just a completely different motivation to get that work done because you know it is important and you know why it is needed. Um, I think it's also in the responsibility uh, of, of the, on the, on the leadership level, a uh, leadership level, that uh, you make sure that people take enough time off and not just taking the time of, uh, so and really taking the time off. So it's not just once again about the amount of time, uh, it's really about the, the quality time they are taking off. And I mean, as a team lead, you need to make sure that your guys take the time off. And that, and I've done this before, that could include that you just switch off their email or their VPN access just to make sure they take their vacations. Um, if there are conflicts within a team, we need to understand and address it. I mean, conflicts are natural. We just need to understand it. And if we have continuous conflicts, um, we need to understand the root cause. Um, and I mean, for all the things that go wrong in a project, um, it, it's, I mean, it's easy to find a culprit and this is usually what happens. Um, you, People just try to find a culprit. No, what you should do is go and find the root cause. I mean, it's like, um, one of the main rule of engineering is 
a problem that you do not understand will always hit you back very badly. And this just does not apply for just technical topics. I mean, this is just the main rule. We need to understand problems so we can address and we can solve it. Um, also, a, a topic for team leads is spot changes in behavior, for sure. If you see that one of your community members, one of your team members um, shows a different behavior than usual, talk about it, try to address it. And last but not least, I know it's a difficult topic, but we need to give people enough time for their task. Um, for sure. If we work on a project, if time is running out, we're hitting a deadline. And I know we all like deadlines, right? Specifically that nice whooshing sound they make when they pass by. Um, so we usually get stressed and want to get things done. But um, what I learned from an old engineer in the early days, when I just finished my studies, um, what he always told us is, if it's urgent, take your time. And that means for sure that won't change the urgency of the topics, but just remember, take your time to think properly, uh, properly of what you need to get done. And this is something, I mean, from a leadership perspective, you need to make sure that your team has the proper time and the proper environment, even if things are getting urgent. Okay, so, um, This was basically a lot of topics related to burnout. So let's quickly try to summarize um, what I've been talking about. Um, what have we learned? So at the end of the day, we have learned that burnout is a complex and a very serious topic. So once again, it is very individual. Um, it looks different from person to person, um, but there's a lot of things uh, we can do um, so we have learned that there are symptoms that are evolving over time, but um, these symptoms are really hard to realize or hard to spot for an affected person. Um, so, but as a coworker, as a team lead, as a friend, we can spot these symptoms and we can try to address it. Uh, but also remember here that this is a continuous effort and it needs patience because the affected person might not realize. But we can try to take countermeasures early. Um, as an affected person, we have to accept that the recovery process is a continuous effort. So that means that um, we need to accept the situation um, and continuously accept the situation. Uh, we need to talk about the situation and just continuously we need to, I mean, we need to remember that in our daily life. And once again, remember, uh, we can put measures. Uh, you can implement your personal alarm system just to spot early if things go wrong again. So once again, it is a continuous effort. And well, if you want to take one key message from this presentation, um, then, I mean, we need to come back to the communication. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Good communication is a key aspect. So if we fail with communication, we will fail with many things and that will just cause stress and frustration um, for a team and for a community. So please remember, good communication is a key aspect for avoiding burnout situations. It is the key aspect for dealing with burnout situation. And uh, it is the key, key aspect for recovering from burnout situations. So at the end of the day, communication is the key. Um, this is pretty much what I wanted to tell. Um, once again, it's, it's important for me to raise awareness on this topic. Um, let me take the opportunity and thank each and anyone um, that gave input on this presentation. So um, basically this presentation was an outcome of many, many conversations um, uh, and I got a lot of good input. So thanks to each and anyone who helped me out. And um, I hope, I know it's a very complex topic. It's um, not that easy to explain. So I hope um, it was kind of understandable. And for sure, if you have questions, um, please contact me at any time. Thanks a lot.